I'm CK and in what is another installment in what I guess has become a series uh, of trying out inexpensive soldering stations. We've got this one today uh, from Wise High out of China. It's cordless spot welder kit. It says spot welding but they really mean uh, soldering. They often use welding for what we would uh, in the U.S. say soldering. It's cordless because it uses a DeWalt 20 volt battery for power so you can carry it all around your yard, out to your car, to a pool room, a shed, to anywhere. It's nice to have a portable soldering unit. Now this one is specifically designed to work with DeWalt. They have ones that will work with Ryobi or Makita battery packs also. So this is $37 US on Amazon as of today, which is September 20 something, 2024. Of course, that doesn't factor in the price of the batteries. Now, since I use DeWalt hand tools for everything and I've got many battery packs, uh, it's easy enough for me to do this. But pick the one that goes with your battery pack or maybe get a battery pack just for this. I don't know, whatever suits your needs best, but this is probably going to cost more than the soldering unit itself. So we'll see how well it works, and I hope you enjoyed the video. It's the box, Wise High Cordless Spot Welder Kit, a little picture of it, uh, model, max temperature 932 Fahrenheit 500C, min temperature 212 Fahrenheit 100C, Voltage is 18 to 21 volts, 60 watts. Weight is like a little less than a pound. Anything else on here? To reduce the risk of injury, read the danged manual, which we probably won't. Let's get it open. Okay, Let's see what we've got in here. I'm going to pull everything out. We'll get the box ready for recycling. And let's see what's in here. First, we've got a couple of, looks like, solder helping hands that we may be able to screw onto it. Gives us one, two, three, four, five additional soldering tips. They don't look real great, but they're probably very serviceable. Now we'll pull the actual unit out. Okay, so what do we got here? We've got the iron with a little plastic protector on the tip. That's a big thick tip. I'd never use that on my electronic soldering, but I might use it in the car under the hood. It's got a little indicator here saying, this is hot, if you didn't already know that. Got an on off. There's a little scratching on that, but then again, it's the, it's still under the anti-scratch foil. I mean, film, which I'm not going to take off because I often don't. Got our little sponge. I'm not going to wet it down right now because I don't want to. Up and down for temperature, I'm going to assume. And you can put the rest of the iron in there. I'm going to take the twist tie off the power cord. I might take this apart. I might not. There, you've got the two terminals that mesh with the B plus or B minus and B plus power on the battery. And it's got this little thing here. Oh, it's that slides in that slot. I never noticed that before. And yeah, these are little thingies. you can put on on the side to help you hold, say, two wires 
or components to solder them. That's kind of nice to have that included. Now we will take a look at the instructions because they're very, very short. I can read short stuff. Temperature of the heating core, which is a difference of 54 degrees to room temperature. Okay, soldering station, ideal tool for soldering tin wires. Melting point of tin, oh, tin solder. Uh, temperature memory, when the power is turned on again, it'll reset to last use. That's nice. Uh, plus minus buttons, press and hold the switch button to the LCD display off for at least five seconds and then it'll turn on. Okay. Voltage display. When it goes below 17 volts, the welding station buzzer will show a former low voltage alarm. Same time, the LCD displays DCL, which is must be direct current low. When it's lower than 15 volts, the welding station stops. So 10 minutes it goes into standby mode, which is nice. And then we've got the two uh, side dinguses to hold stuff. When the soldering station is in standby mode, you can move or pick up the pen again, which will wake up the station. Okay, that seems all very reasonable to me. Now we'll do what we all really care the most about, which is we'll plug this thing in. Slides on just like most connections to a DeWalt battery. Raises it up some. Now I'm going to press the on button. Oh, you have to hold it on for like five seconds. There we go. And it says 212 volts. Okay, there it goes. Oh, so it's set to 212 and it got there very quickly. So I'm going to take this up to what... Oh, I'm hitting the minus button. Minus button's on the wrong side. I'm going to take it up to what I typically use, which is about 675 Fahrenheit because I'm I do that because I don't stay on something very long huh kind of coarse I'll leave it right there at 680 wow it warms up very quickly and there it's stabilized at what it thinks is 680 I've got my fluke with a thermocouple connected to it and we'll give a quick check on the end. Uh, the thermocouple can be like 20 degrees, 20, 30 degrees off. Oh, I'm in the wrong thing. Uh, there we go. And I'm going to set the range to Fahrenheit. And we'll give it a touch. It's shown 500, but again, there's like a 20% slop factor in these. So again, I don't know how reliable that indication is, so we'll just ignore that. But I'll get a piece of solder, which is the critical part, and tin the new tip a little bit. Oh yeah, it's very hot. Okay? Let me brush that off on my other solder stand. That looks fine. So let's do some actual soldering with it. I've got pieces from a kit I'm not going to be doing anything with. So let me grab uh, one of the LEDs out of here. And again, I've got to say this soldering tip is uh, a lot thicker than I would normally use. I'd nor Okay, they do have a thin one. Uh, actually, why don't I do that? I'm going to turn this off. And it is off, and I'm going to switch tips, which you won't necessarily always want to do when it's just been on, but I will. I've done this 
numerous times switching hot tips. So I'll do that. Now it comes with this little wrench. I don't know what that little wrench would be for. I'm going to use my regular needle nose to... Of course this is hot. And I'm just doing this because, as I've mentioned many times, I've burnt my fingers so much over the years that I don't really feel the pain from that. So again, I'm not sure. We pull this tip off. There's the ceramic heating element. It's a little cattywampus, little sideways. And I don't know if you can see this. You probably can't. I'm setting down the old tip somewhere where it won't necessarily set things on fire. There is a little flaw here. The, where is it? There's a screwdriver. It's a little crack right here in the metal sheathing. That's not great. But, again, $37 US. Now I'll put this smaller tip on and get the shroud back, which is still warm. So the tip change was pretty quick, as you saw. I'll power this back up. So what is getting, what it's reading 680 on is that clear ceramic core. So it's not necessarily what's going on at the tip. It's just the core is up to 680 and how much heat it transfers to the soldering tip is dependent on a couple of things. It depends on uh, the tightness of, pick this up because that is still warm, it depends on the tightness of the ceramic core into that little hole and this is not that tight so it's not going to be transferring all the heat and then there's sheer, uh, strictly the distance that it has to go so let me tin up this smaller tip I don't think I got the very tip yet very well okay clean that off now I'll go ahead and where did I put that? Come on, I just had that little red LED and I bounced it somewhere. And well, I got more LEDs than I got sense, so I'll just grab another one out. And I'll put this LED through this circuit board like so. Spread the leads out. Untangle the wire a little bit. It's a little heavier than I'm used to, than my weller. And the body is a little thicker. It's more like the thickness of a Heiko uh, than it is a weller. But that's all personal preference. I'm not feeling any heat here, so that's good. Now we'll actually do some soldering. And it soldered just fine. So I'm not going to complain at all about that. Now one other thing I'm going to do here, and this one looks good. Uh, I always test the cord because you may inadvertently set your iron down on the cord. Uh, I know everybody says, oh, I'll never do that. Well, I've done it three times in 50 some odd years of soldering, so I know it happens. This one at least is called industrial silicon, so it may be heat resistant. Like this solder pad that I use, it's heat resistant. I can put the hot iron on there and it doesn't melt it. It's, it's not affected at all. High temperature silicon is what you want. So we'll see if this is high temperature silicon. And yes, it is. Look at that. It does not melt at all. That's really good. Okay, that's a huge plus in this device's category. So, from Wise High 
and this battery is going to last forever with this soldering iron. Let me see, I mean, it's full, it, this 4 amp hours is going to last forever and ever. And the battery, you notice the temperature stayed the same for when I turned it off and turned it back on. And it's got a convenient little rest and you can carry it around with you wherever you want to go around the yard, around the house, not having to worry about extension cords or anything like that. A very handy unit and does everything I would expect. And again, the high temperature silicon cord, oh that's what the little wrench is for, little wrenches to tighten these guys on. Uh, I can certainly recommend this. This is a fine little unit. And $37 US plus the cost of a battery. And if you're a DeWalt person, you probably already have plenty of batteries around. All in all, pretty happy with this. And I hope you enjoyed the video.